all happy new year this is your favorite channel your favorite tea tea your favorite hot volcanic tea spiller new spiller your tea tea your favorite babe Kirsty valentine i'm sure you all had a wonderful time over the new year thank you very much for tuning on to my channel today i have breaking news and this is a global news this is striking this is you you kind of like cringe to 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 hear this news and um, it's i'm i'm just gonna go straight breaking this news it's taking me time to do this video it's taking me time i i gave it a lot of thought behind this story that i'm going to talk about today um it's i i just want to say and express my sympathies and support to all the victims of this harmless, sweet, boyish looking man who you would never suspect or expect to be a sexual predictor. It is reported that he sexually assaulted his victims over a hundred and forty eight young men and the greater uh, magister police force they are still counting considering the fact that a lot of the victims may not want to come uh, to the police to talk about it because some of them are married men some of them are straight men and um, he his crime is, uh, it's, I, in fact, I don't have any words to best describe the crime uh, that this 36-year-old PhD foreign international Indonesian student, Reinhard Sinaga, who is from an upper middle class family, um, a devout Christian, a Catholic, uh, his parents uh, were very well off. They sent him to international schools. They sent him here to England in 2007 to um, uh, for his PhD, um, a course, a master's and his PhD. And um, he lived in Manchester. He lived in one of these posh apartments in the heart of Manchester City, um, which this is where he uh, allegedly was able to carry out all this heinous, heinous crime uh, for a very, very long period, unsuspiciously undetected. It was a shock to his friends, it was a shock to his family, and a shock to his neighbors. Here's the news. Yes, who was Reinhard Sinaga? Reinhard Sinaga was born in 1983 in Indonesia. He lived in the city of Sumatra. His dad was a banker and from a devout uh, Catholic family. He was one of the three kids that his, both, both of his parents had. His parents were worthy enough to send him to private schools and international schools. And he came to Manchester, England in 2007 to, uh, for, for his master's and then he now went on to um, for further studies, which apparently he's studying to be a PhD um, student. Apparently he's writing his thesis. His thesis is about gay and bisexual Indonesian men in Manchester. He had this friendly, kind look he was openly gay and um, he did a lot of charity work in the church the church uh, the catholic church that he went to um, accepted him as he was openly gay and he said it several times he was very open about it he was very vocal about it that um, he's very very happy living in Manchester he's very very happy uh, that he lives in Manchester he's very happy um, that the church community the Catholic community in Manchester have accepted him 
as an openly gay man. He did a lot of charity work for the Catholic Church which he attended. He was a devout Catholic man. But nobody saw the sinister side of him. That was the other side of him. Nobody saw the sinister side of uh, Reinhard Sinaga. He had so many friends. Um, he hung out a lot in coffee shops and hung out a lot with his friends. It was even thought that he had girlfriends to cover. Um, and that was before he came out as an openly gay man because he did say it was difficult for him to live his life in a conservative country and conservative community as in Indonesia because his sexuality was never, never accepted in Indonesia and by his parents and his parents never he did mention that his parents never accepted his sexuality and his parents thought that he was a devoted uh, student he was studious he had his head in his books not knowing that um, i mean according to the report by the inspector who's been on his case and inspecting this case uh, the inspector said that that his lecturers reported that he was not a very good student no wonder because he spent most of his time you know harboring uh, around uh, the coffee shops looking for his praise because um you know his praise who became who were his victims young men he assaulted over a hundred and forty eight men some men were married they were straight they were in uh, gay or bisexual so uh, some the, the authorities are still counting um, and we should all put into consideration that some of these men would not necessarily want to come out because it has affected them what what Reinhard did was to go out at night in in the video you will see him leaving his apartment and going through the main door and walking in the streets what he does because they had the gay village very close to his apartment block that's where he was able to pick his victims that's where he was able to pray and get his victims what he did Reinhard was to um, go to them and presented himself as this nice guy kind-hearted guy and he would speak to them and he would say to them he could help them he, he said he worked for charity he talked about studies he talked about religion and he lured them back into his apartment where he missed the drug called g which is a very dangerous drug it was lethal he would Put it in the alcohol like vodka you know you have different kinds of percentage when you want to go for spirits when you want to go for alcohol you got different you got different grades he went for the hardcore one like 40 percent 50 percent 60 percent one so he diced these alcohol strong alcohol like vodka gin and so on and so forth with these particular drugs called g that drug called g is very very popular in the gay scene the drug g is very very popular in the gay world and in the gay lifestyle so he would dice it in this alcohol and give it to these men and what they did is that when they drank it it knocked them out completely and when they were knocked out completely that's when he pounced and started sexually assaulting them and while he was doing this thing he had every single victim he had every single sexual encounter and assault he had on this innocent man recorded and saved in his laptops the police were able to find more than five to six laptops in his chest of drug in the video you would see the laptop he filmed every single crime and that was a very good lead for the police because that was how they were able to get in contact with 
his victims, Reinhard Sinaga's victims, and that was how they were able to bring them into the police station to come and testify. I mean, according to the QC judge and the uh, detective, the police uh, high police officer, he said Reinhard, while he was in the court, showed no remorse. He had no conscience whatsoever. He is a predator. I mean, he showed no remorse um, in the court. The QC, QC, um, the judge, the high judge, who sentenced him to between 32 years to life imprisonment, he's only given the fact and considering the fact that he's only 36, uh, said to him, you are a heartless rapist. You have no remorse. You have no regret. You have no conscience. I mean, when he was caught, a member of the Catholic Church gave a reference to the police. And the judge was saying that I cannot believe, even the police officer said, that they cannot believe that a devout Christian who has such deep Christian belief will be able to commit such heinous evil crime on fellow men. Do you know that the police also found out and the judge also found out that his visa, his student visa, expired last, um, two years ago, uh, uh, September 2018. So he's still, he's illegally here. You know, he did apply for a visa and it was renewed, but it did expire in on September of 2018. We are now in 2020. So he's now been convicted and he has been convicted as an illegal immigrant whilst in custody. So I would really like to express my, my, my support, my sympathies to all the victims involved in this heinous crime innocent men men who were coming out of the club who were drunk or some homeless young men he used to lure them and he sexually assaulted them and because he knocked them out with that horrible drug some of them could have woken up without bruises or not knowing what had happened to them i I, 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 what really hits me in my mind and in my heart is that how could, how was he able to lure a, over a hundred and forty-eight men into his apartment and how after the attack he had on, on these innocent men, how was he able to get them out of his apartment? Did they get up to walk on their own out of his apartment? How come his neighbors did not suspect? I, I, if you look at the apartment block, it's a huge apartment block, it's a luxury apartment block. Come on, there must be somebody who must have sus suspected something. Somebody must have sus suspected something. And his victims, okay, did they, after the attack, some of them, I'm thinking, did any one of them think they were something went on? Did they go to the police? And I think, I think, I think yes. I think, 
I think, I, I, I really, really think that some of his victims went to the police to report and that's why they started investigating. I mean, he has this sweet Asian, you know, hardworking, straightforward, sweet boyish look. You would never suspect this man had a different <laughs> sinister life to him. You would never suspect someone who was a devoted Christian, who, who was a volunteer, who did a lot of charity work in his church, even his ex-girlfriends, his friends, never suspected. Never, it came as a shock to everybody. He wasn't, he was only five foot seven, slender. He didn't have no threatening look. He had a very sweet, innocent look to him. So there is no way you could suspect. There is no way you could suspect that he was someone like that. So please, I, I, I let's express our support and our sympathies to the victims and the families of the victims. I, I hope you, you are able to find the right treatment to heal you, to overcome this 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 experience or the this the experience you've had with Reinhard Senaga. And I, I'm I'm happy that the predator was caught and he's been put behind bars because you can't leave such people in the streets. He's a menace, he's a threat, and he's a danger to every young man working in the streets of Manchester. Who knows if he would have got, got fed up of Manchester and gone out of Manchester and go commit that crime somewhere in another city. It could be he has done it. I'm not saying he has, I don't know. And the police are still investigating because they are still waiting for more people to come up. The worst serial rapist in the history of England. So I'm glad he was caught off a court uh, by the authorities and he's been sentenced by the QC and he's been put behind bars for life. So what's up guys? Thank you very much for tuning on to my channel. Today is your favorite titty, your favorite babe, Kirsty Valentine. Hey, hit that red button on the right of the screen to subscribe. Press the bells button for notifications in that way you know when I go live streaming or when a new video have been uploaded. Do not forget to press like. Do not forget to share this video with your family and friends. It's educational and it, we keep it mainstream in our communities. In that way, we keep awareness going. And do not forget to leave a comment. In that way, we are learning and learning from our mistakes. You know, we are not above mistakes. This channel, the, the content creator of my channel, Kirsty Valentine, I am not perfect. I don't know it all. You can teach me. You can leave a comment. When you leave a comment, you teach me and we all learn. Thank you very much for tuning onto this channel. Until our next video, I seek love and peace.